uh, and I'm going to send it off to Beth too. So I'm going to see if I can record it and either post it on Facebook or, or send it directly to you. I, I have never done that, but I'm going to try it. Oh, great. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank Good. you. Yes. I'm trying to expand my uh, technology. Woo. <laughs> Stand back. So All right. So the first one, um, the first, what I want to do is just do a really tight bud here. So we're going to create a circle on the top here. And, and down at the bottom, we're going to have our frets. And then we're going to create three petals and then three petals in the back. Okay. So with my pencil, I'm going to make, I'm just going to make an oval shape here. And from that oval, I'm gonna I'm gonna have the stem down here, and I can just put my stem down there. It's got some of these little. So here's here's my stem. That's where I'm gonna land from this corner down to make my V shape. So I, I'm here on the corner of this circle, and then I'm also made a stem at the bottom. So we're going to practice this petals in front. I love the little flatness. See if I can get three in here. Those are petals in the front that we see. And then we want to finish it with petals in the back. And so what I'm going to do is to, I'm just going to build from the, the top of this petal another And I'm touching those petals down there. Sometimes there's one on the edge here. So that's how we get this cone shape. And how the you know when the petals are just really tight. The next one I want to do is wider because I want to, I want to, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take our box, do a larger circle. I'm going to find the stem down here. Here's my one, this time I have one, two, three, four front petals. I'm going to pause because I'm going to make my half circle and the little um, yellow parts and then comes the other petals. Okay, so let's try that. So I'm going to start with a larger circle. I can think about that center and then I can set a new marker. The stem and the reason I want this stem down here, <clears throat> excuse me, is because it's going to, oh, 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 oh. Long, long story. It's going to be okay. I'm going to make that into a petal. Good. <laughs> I recovered. So what happened was I, I didn't use the edge of the circle where I would want, wanted to, to make that cone shape wide enough. But I'm going to come in here and still get my Couple of petals there. Now this time we want to see, we want to see some of the, we're going to be looking at this. Okay. So, so these petals are, are we're going to see some of the petal and front of the petals, and then we're going to see some of this and behind. So I'm going to grab my pencil real quick because I want to make a circle right in here. This is this, this is the red disc part. And then I'm going to have the little yellow pieces just building them around the edge of that circle I just made. So I've got my red and yellow. 
we're thinking about the different parts. You don't need to do this. It's just kind of going to maybe help you out see it. So here's that disc. Those are the little pieces. And then I'm going to come up and around here. Get this back petals. Actually, I can show you. This little flower here is what we're working on, this idea. Some of the front petals, these are a little bit, this circle's a little bit bigger, which is nice. Some of the center, and then the petals around. Okay, here comes our butterfly. So where we're going to start on the butterfly, we've got our, our shape here, is I'm going to make a diagonal line right across here, because that's going to be the center of the body. So I've just left a little space here, and, and, and really size-wise, however that works out for you. And there's three parts to the body, three shapes. One is a kind of a oval little head with two, what are we calling? I can't think of the name of them right now. Antenna. Thank you. I have a larger oval kind of flattish for the body. And then this is also a very narrow, larger for the um, tail. The way I like to make the legs is a straight across, which I one on the top and down with a little foot. And then I'm gonna put another leg straight across, down. Now I'm not sure how many legs they have. So we're, we're just putting two in there. Okay, so this is going to make a great, this will make a great uh, body. We found that this a dark brown color uh, yesterday worked out really well. And then there are a couple of key places I'm going to grab my pencil because a lot happens from right here. This gets a curve here. I'm going to leave this right here. This gets a curve here. Here's, here's where I am. Here's where I'm right here. I made my dot right here. It gets a curve here. It comes up, comes around. And then I'm going to pause a minute because I also have a straight line across here. This is where I'm going to end it. And this is where it comes around. So let me grab my marker. There's a little bit of a wave here on this top. It tucks in a little bit, uh, wing. This one, it has a rounded shape, a little bit of a, a wave as it curves, and then it comes back down, connects there. So here's our rectangular shape. It's a little narrow. It's like uh, three quarters by an inch, so it's narrower than longer. <clears throat> we use our corner to get that body in there, and then we build from the body. And I've always given these little circles, and I don't really know where that comes from, but... By the way, um, the yellow sulfurs are fast. They're hard to take pictures of. I don't know how anybody got that picture that's in that. <laughs> they are. They don't hang around long on the flower. I chased one around. Uh, the property, uh, not too much, <laughs> zero success. 
Now the bigger ones, the swallow tail or slow one. Excuse me, Allie. And you might be interested to know that when I saw it was the sulfur butterfly, I thought, oh, that's what we have in our garden, which is um, called a brimstone. So I googled both of them, um, and although brimstone and sulfur, you know, I think historically came from the same thing, um, they're completely different butterflies, completely different families, but just similar color. Isn't that interesting? And you're welcome to kind of use this instruction. You know, I don't know if you have a book or you can get something and trace it to get the shape and proportion and, you know, kind of this, the technique that I use really is, you know, getting a flat picture, what's the yeah. proportion yeah. and then how do I trim it down or, and, and that's part of what I'm trying to get you all to um, get some, even visually getting a feel for, you know, okay, if this is half the size of what my picture is and you could even make that, you know, make that box. That's great, Allie. I'm I'm so glad that this, this is interesting. Yeah, you know, another eyes. That. <laughs> <laughs> That's the goal. That's really my goal is for you to be looking at things differently. All right, let's be sure. I want to be sure to do a leaf, and we're really getting good at leaves, but I want to do it a little bit differently. Just want you to create a stem shape, and then I'm going to put the leaf. You'll see that the leaf is has a nice rounded shape goes up to a point. Uh, we've got our three distinct veins in here coming from the base. So let's, I think you can, you know, we're, we're pretty good at this for sure. Just gonna get, see if we can get that stem in there. And then what I wanna do is do this from the center. So the leaf, I wanna create the center line first. We're going to make the outside curve and bring it up and around. You can make, we can make a guide. So when I get ready to do this, so here's my center. And I'm just being a little arbitrary with size. Here's the biggest I'm going to make it side to side. So I'm going to come up and around, hit here. Here's my one dot guide. Here's my other dot guide. And at the bottom, they're very, very close to the stem. Like, wait, just right. Here's my curve there. Now I'm going to make it smaller. Okay, so you can make your guide points that help you with the shape. And then we, the second vein goes very closely. Here, I'm going to look again. Yeah, it goes up to here. It's very close to the shape of the leaf. So my second one, again, I'm gonna, these are opp opposites. I'm gonna push it up this way. There's my middle. Here, I'm gonna make my halfway, or it's not even halfway, it's sort of like a third of the way. This one I'm gonna make a little thicker, a little round, a little rounder on the bottom. I'm still gonna get that point. Great, okay. Good, okay. Questions before we get to our... Got a couple of videos out. Our other page. Getting ready, I'm getting ready here to turn the page. So I'm just going to go back just to let you know that um, we started our box. I started my box much bigger uh, than I ended up with. So I'm going to do a quick measurement here because I found that I had too much on the bottom. This is, I think we're going to go from, I'm going to make another four inches. We'll go four inches 
by five, four by five. And again, be sure we make this pencil because there's some fun things that can happen, you know, as we go along as far as size goes. So four by five. And just, I got my little ruler, I'm just gonna hook it on here and come down an inch. Gives me enough room to play around. Four is going left to right, narrower. Mark my four, give myself five down here. Great. So it's longer than it's wide, right? Yes. The five, okay. Thank you. Yep, 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 always ask. Here's our five inches, here's our four inches. And I'm actually gonna shift to this, sorry. I like to shift to a bigger, bigger screen for you. Big screen. Great. So I like to show you a little bit of this one. Get a tracing paper and just play with where we're going with this and how this is going to work. I'm just going to work with some circles here. And again, where, where, the, where all this happens for you is, you know, all good. But in general, we're going to start with the big rounder flower right here. So this is where we'll start. Notice how close it is here and and what the, the width here is going to allow me for this one. So here's number two. Again, fairly close. This is a very close, but I want to be sure to have enough space. So this is actually one inch. And this, I think, is just like a quarter of an inch. I can't write. OK. So we're going to be fairly close here. We're going to leave an inch. We're going to come in here. Then I'm going to move over here, make my other circle. And I have to leave enough space for the butterfly. OK? So again, this is why this is pencil. You know what? Whoop, I can move it over a little if I need to. Just going to come down. We're going to make a third one here. So that's where we're going to go. One, two, three, four. Five is what we're going to do. That's where we're going to start, and then we can then we can add in some of however these land for you. We're going to get them to crisscross. That's going to be a big goal for ours to have this be, you know, look very realistic with all this in and out. Okay, so let's start with that first one, and I'm going to come. Just down a little bit. This is going to be the top of the circle. The circle itself is an inch and a quarter. This is my center. And again, this can be, this can be approximate. I'm just going to, here's the big circle. Okay. <laughs> Oops, pretty good. So it came a little bit from the top. Um, oh look, I hit my inch mark here. Here's my, here's my width. Then I'm set with that. Then I'm going to put my mark right here because I know I don't want to touch that. And I know I want a little bit, I don't want to touch that. <laughs> okay. And here comes the, another circle. I made that circle too big, but that's okay. Got my pencil. And again, that we there's a little bit of stretch room here. We know this one's a little bit smaller. I'll probably curve this one out. Here comes this one. So the third one, okay, we got one and two. Three, I don't want it to touch here. Oh, 
not very good at circles, as you can see. This is going to be this one here. So I may want it to be a little bit bigger, but I've also got to get this box here for the butterfly. I might be able to make this. We'll see. This is going to come this way. And then I have a small circle down here. And I can leave it right like that. In other words, what I'm going to do next is to is to start to get more specific about what the flower looks like, the butterfly looks like, the butt and the buds. So this is gonna this will get me started for sure. That's got my circles. And I just want to pause a minute because I want to be sure that we do together this center one, this one first one, okay? This, this is the confusing one because we make a we start it in a different place and, and I'll be sure we get that that longer flavor. We wanna we wanna be and actually, so I'm gonna make I'm gonna make an X in here. I could, okay, as best I can. And where I want to start is gonna be right here, because as I this isn't really in the center, so it's above the center. I want to leave. I want to leave some depth here. So here comes my key, like I did before. Then I have the rest of this circle. I have an underneath circle, and and I start with the yellow pieces going up into the circle. Then on top here. They go outside the circle. Inside on the bottom, outside on the top. I'm going to erase some of my guides here and notice how much I left a lot of room here for some deep zinnia. Let's get some color in here. And I, there's a little bit of room too to do a little bit more on the top. So we can, there's a little bit of play here for me. I've got my, I'm glad to have a little space. Now, as I'm listening to Debbie, let's go ahead and get some guide circles in here. Oh, I'm gonna use my eraser again. I don't want it that deep. But I'm gonna keep it pretty narrow on the back here. It's gonna get bigger. Narrow on the back, maybe a third. Great. So now I have an opportunity. These are guide points. I may not reach them all, but that will help me get started. And I want to work with uh, the idea of these flat petals. Pretty, I'm trying to get these closer together because I remember during my practice time, I wasn't very successful. Look how short they are in the back. Eeny weeny. Okay. But you're supposed to leave space between them, right? And uh, not necessarily. You can uh, be, either uh -oh. way works. Okay. I felt like it worked better for me when they were closer when I was doing every other. It didn't seem like okay. the second row of petals was that wide. Okay. Okay, good, good. Always ask. I'm always glad to hear from you. So here comes my second row. In between, in between, you know, back here, my back is pretty narrow, pretty short.
And now I'm definitely not going to do too much in the back there. I think I might have an extra row in there, but I couldn't help myself. I'm going to be, I'm going to use my eraser as I go. I think I've got a giant petal. <laughs> Woo! I'm going to grab my pencil because I'm going to make my stem. You know, I'm going to start from that center, be sure I get it so it makes sense. And I'm not going to go too far down because I want to play with this down here to get it crisscross and Yesterday I had to play around to get all of these to crisscross. So I, uh, you know, what, I'm just going to leave it like that. Now let's ta let's tackle this butterfly story. Okay, I've got this box three quarters of an inch. I'm just going to write it down over here. Three quarters, left to right, and just about an inch, a little up and down. And I think I'm going to erase the box itself, but I'm going to leave the points. I'm just going to put some points in there, see if I can do it with guide, guide points. So I've got my I've got my my got got my shape set up set up. Sorry, <laughs> you're welcome to add the lines to it if you're more comfortable with that. And I've got you know here's my flower shape right 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 underneath there. And I'm pretty comfortable with what's going on there. And I want to start with pencil that diagonal line. Remember we made a diagonal line in pencil. That's the body. Have a smaller oval head, longer center, and narrower here. I want to. I want to have these feet hanging out. Now there's our guide point there we're going to start from. I know I'm going to curve it here. And I know this comes flat out here and I know I'm going to curve it here. So there's a couple of guides for me. Curved way up the top, curved at the bottom, and then there's a halfway. And I want this to come curved for sure. There's my bottom. This has a little bit of a ruffle edge. And I get that antenna on there. So when I add the flower, this is a really good example. I'm, I'm going to start right here with this half circle. Got those yellow petals sticking up. I'm going to complete the circle around. Got the yellow sticking on the outside. So right here. And as a matter of fact, I want this to be a little bit more up and down. I'm going to try something here. I'm actually going to make this a little bit like that. Let's see if I can. So here's that half circle and the yellow 
then I'm going to finish the circle and put the, the yellow shapes on the top. Going to add my oval shape around. Working around this little butterfly. Short on the back, long on the front. And I am going to make these fairly long on the front, but it's awfully nice to get some color in them. They're too small. Not much fun. I'm going to have another layer down here just for fun. Yay. Let me just kind of do it. That stem in there, and I might have to move my little flower here. <clears throat> Glad to have that in pencil because I think this is a little close. How this worked out. So you have three rows of petals? I do, it may be too many though. No, no, so, I was just looking, my butterfly looks too big compared to my flower. So then I would add another, can you add another row, B? Yeah, okay. It's interesting. Um, I'm, I'm going to because it's more, it's just more fun to have more color, more stuff to color. This, the zinnies are so fun. And this, this uh, pink and lavender violet is really a great combination. And any of you that have some zinnias or the color combinations are really stunning. I mean, the color just flies off these petals. Pinks are just gorgeous. Yikes. All right. Well, I am going to move my little bud here on this right side. And I can bring it down and give it a little bit more room. And that just gives a little breathing space here, from here to here. Actually, don't raise it again. What happens here is, this is the really small one. Here's where it's the base. And here's my center. I'm gonna make this oval shape right here. Remember our triangle. So I came up from the bay, from this here, that this circle right there, over right there. So here's my stem. I'm gonna land here. There's a petal. There's a petal on facing me. And then I'm going to come back to the back here. Get a little tricky.
Okay. I'm gonna look closely at this because I think I'm gonna lower this too, by the way. Get some more flower power here in here. Down. So now I'm gonna just bring this further away. And this flower is the one that we've got a larger opening circle here. So I'm just gonna trim this just a little bit. So I'm gonna have some petals up front. This is like a circle within this. I'm actually gonna put this circle. And this circle is, well, is an inch. So if you can get an inch here, one inch left to right, I think that will be helpful. I'm gonna bring this down to make my triangle shape. So that, that cone shape is what we're looking for. We're looking for an inch, circle, oval. Let's get another half an inch down to the stem. There's our, where we're gonna get our triangle shape. Because this is gonna be where the front leaves are. Here's a front leaf. So my circle is right in here. Front leaf, up petals, back petals. And there's also a little bit of that red and the yellow. So here's this. And then these are going to be my little and here comes the petals that we're going to color up front so once i got that circle i got space for the petals stem I added that little uh, oval in the center that's red. There's my little yellow. And then here comes, I'm gonna use that edge. All right, any questions on our flower? Can I do something again? Can I show you? You feeling comfortable with where your flowers are located? I'm good. Should we um, ink in? anything or should we wait till we do our stems so we have the uh, we have our stem in the right place in case we need to erase our flowers i would let's definitely do stems next sarah okay and i'm going to show you a little bit about um debbie's coming back i'm going to show you a little bit about uh, really i'm going to do this pretty lightly because i want to put leaves in here and stems and i want them to crisscross does that make sense and yesterday it took me a little while to get this all right so i want to show you what some of the process hey debbie we're just looking for your sound there hon there you go maybe so sarah's asking about stems and what I, my goal is to have this be crisscrossed at the bottom. See this bottom here? See how this long one in the middle, I want to, I want to cut it with a leaf shape, and then I want leaves to overlap. So even though it's the center, I don't want my center to be like way like an accent. 
And then this one, I had to curve a lot to get it to come way over to the left. This one I snuck in between, this one I snuck in between. So let's see how, how I can get this to work. And uh, uh, Debbie's, I guess, in and out, oh dear. So I'm gonna see how far I can stretch this stem over to the left-hand side. See, look how this one's gonna be my cross, cross over, <laughs> okay? And I want to stretch this one as far as I can in there too. On this side, so I'm, I'm wanted to. I'm pushing these stems to the, the the flowers on the right stems to the left, and then I, then I can also do the same thing here. Look at this. There we go. That's my goal. And actually. This one can be on top, or this one can be below. I can start making this crisscross idea. And then I wanna pop this one right there. I want this one to end up right here. Let's see if I can go backwards. I might be able to, good. Okay. So this is up front. These are behind. Good. So what I did was I thought, okay, let's start, let's get this stem. Let's see if we can push it way over here on the left. Let's see if we can push this one up to the right, left, right. And there, it, it, see if there's enough room to get that curve in there. And I don't think that's so unusual for Zinnias to, How's our Debbie doing? Whoop. So then with the leaves, for sure, I can, I'm gonna start here on the left because I wanna have a leaf that goes behind. Ooh, that shape is not a leaf shape. <laughs> Sorry. Let me do a straight line first. Okay. So see how I'm able to get this crisscross. This is up front. And then I want I want this also, I gotta do some alternate here. I get so excited. <laughs> Maybe I can make this a little bit smaller. You can see there's a lot of erasing that happens at this point. So I've got a leaf behind this one. Now I want a leaf on top of it and I bet it could come from over here. So I'm just slowly, now this one bumps right, it might be okay. So I'm not gonna put a leaf on top of that flower, but I think it's okay behind it. Oh boy. All right, Debbie's back, maybe not with sound, or with, oh jeepers, bless her heart. What's more frustrating than technology? Raise your hand, <laughs> you agree. Okay, questions, concerns?
See if I can get a turn leaf in here. Ah, we haven't talked about that in a while. You have a force of leaves. So when you start to add your marker, I want to be sure that, go ahead and put your flowers in and the and a, and a butterfly first so that we can start some coloring because the leaves you're pretty familiar with doing. So if you'll, you know, with, when you can, go ahead and, you know, be pretty sure that we can color, you know, add color together on the flowers and our butterfly together but so you'll get those and really again even if you're not finished with your leaf crisscrossing and that stuff if you'll go ahead and do that for me now and then you can always go back to those leaves you're, you're good at leaves we and i'll do some coloring on leaves but again i, I feel like the uh, <coughs> excuse me the flowers and that butterfly would be fun to do together Stephanie, um, did you use brown this time or did you use black? Uh, I recommend brown, but I use black. Okay, if great. If you've got your brown, Sarah, I would use it. Okay, I will, thank you. Sure, good question. All right, I'm going to start organizing my fun good color.
Oh, we've got Debbie. Oh, Debbie Stack, she can probably hear us. Oh, uh, yes, I, I'm on my tablet, so. Good. I can hear you, so that's good. And you I'm can see me here? Yes, I can see you, but I can't see me, and that's fine. <laughs> okay, good, good. Glad to have you back. <laughs> that technology is fun, but not that much. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's so yeah, I, I, I figured out how to shut the internet off on this tablet, and then it good. picked up something else or whatever. I don't I'm know. I'm so glad to have the artistic flavor in my brain but boy it doesn't art but the artistic stuff doesn't work with technology no. <laughs> uh, frustrating it is i'm i'm telling you i have to be so patient but you patient. know what you just keep trying and eventually you figure it out good for you <laughs> Brian. good for you so we're inking now Yes, Debbie, if you'd go ahead and just be sure you have your the butterfly and your flowers done. It's okay if the middle is not done. Let's color, yes. let's color together, okay? And then I'm the mm -hmm. stems, we know leaves. I want to be sure that we have some fun with the, the color yeah. together. I'm just playing on a practice page, but I do need help with the color, so. Okay. Um, I have to be back. Pages. You know that. That's my... It's, that's my middle name. Mm -hmm. That's a practice stage. <laughs> yep. Always good. And I, those of you that I, I'm at the point where I'm just organizing some from my pencils. And what we'll want to think about, as you know, is to let's get see if we can get three oranges, a light, medium, and dark. See if we can get some of this magenta light in the dark. So, so part of our, our lesson today is that value. Can we run a, and and are, we can stay in the same hue or we can shift into a different hue. So we're going to be looking for these. Darks and lights. You know, the red family this this. I don't know what to call this family, the orange family. And this is pink and purple family. Oh, so beautiful. And I'm actually going to start with the orange one, the big orange one on top. So if that's helpful, just to So here's this, I'll put this on here for you just to show you what, the, what I'll be working with color range wise. We've got our orange, we've got this, I have a pomegranate and processed red, this kind of, God, I don't know what the, oh, red violet, with a lot of pink. <laughs> This is a, these are, these are in the, oh, totally in the red. The bud is totally in the red family, but, but a light red and a dark red. So what's the number of your red violet? Uh, 195 and 994. And then you could, there's also a 930 if you want to use that one. Oh, I got that one. Good. Cool. 
The other thing that you could pull out is some a purple for this flower bee. I could see a little purple in the darker areas. And what I want you all to remember is we're going to go back to our color wheel, our favorite cover wheel, color wheel, because part of what zinnias do is they take, they, they're going to have red in it, and then they'll have a, just a smidgen of purple in it. Um, or they'll be this, this beautiful orange and have a smidgen of red in it, red orange. So some of them are really pushed this idea of uh, having several color flavors in them. And the other thing to think about too is, you know, our red, when we add white, goes to pink. So here's a family right here of values, dark red to pink. Um, we've got our, this, we've got our purples. I don't see Zinnias too much in purples. Our oranges go to orange yellow. And any of you that have the deco, the neon, I have a neon orange that I like, to, I'm gonna work with. Those neon colors on the bottom can give a lot of brightness as we lay. And that number is 1036. And the other thing you'll need is a yellow, because we've got a little yellow, and I like to work with 915. And the reds for this center, it's the can't do too much with that red, but I've got a, a 923 and a 122. A permanent red and a scarlet red. What, the permanent red's a little bit orangier. So I'm really hoping that we'll start seeing this distinction of hues the more we work with these colors. All right, so let's get started on the big flower. And where I'm going to start is going to be uh, with the yellow. This is, for me, I want to be sure that I get this yellow part in because I don't want to forget it because I can get coloring and just lose, you know, lose my mind, totally forget. So oftentimes I'll look and say, what is it I want to be sure to do <laughs> before I get too involved? Or before I start singing to the music or something, I don't know what I do. <laughs> And then I'm going to also work on that red area, right in the center. And it's hard to make any distinction in here. There does seem to be when I, like this one's almost a purpley red. Let me get the orange and see what the orange looks like. Okay, this orange, this center red is a little on the rusty side, a little on the brown rusty, if you want to play with that. That could be Tuscan red. I'm actually gonna stick with a bright red. But when we look at this orange, we've got of the lighter, we've got lighter orange, a darker orange, and then a bit of red toward the center, close to the center. I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna pull this bad boy out there, good. But I'm going to go back to that red center just to be sure I get it in there. This is a scarlet red. And I might pick up, a pom I'm picking up pomegranate to just put a couple of dots of darker red in there. I always like to have at least two things going on, two flavors.
And one of the main things I want to show you about these layered petals is that I, I very much like to distinguish that the darker part of what the shadow would be. So when I render these, I render a dark around in, in the inside there and where the overlap is. See what I'm adding here? I'm adding. Just, if the sun were shining, there'd be a little bit of a shadow here. I have found this to be a really good way to distinguish this flower. If this is my darker orange. Tell me what, what color is that you're using? It's called Poppy Red. Nine, oh, thank you. Nine, two, two. Always ask, no problem. So that's your, that's not orange, that's kind of, oh, it's sort of orangey red. Okay. That's exactly right. Here we are. Whoop, I went, I went one dial. I went into here, orangey red. Vermilion also would be. So this is one of the key things to this layered. And then I had my regular orange. This is just orange. And notice what happens. And I don't know how well you can see this, or maybe you can see it on your page. That just pops those petals, having that darker. Oops, I put the wrong one. So I'm gonna just be sure to have the little the little in between areas are dark and where there is a overlap there's a line of dark and then i can put my my orange we're working with orange and then also on that orange could be a little yellow just hit, to turn the dial again and make these edges yellow, the super edge. So I've got that layer, I've got the back dark, the overall orange, and then where the petal sticks out, the edge of that petal, I'm adding a little yellow and I'm getting a really fun combination. And as you know, our zinnia is just, there's green in color. So pop that red in there. Here comes the orange. And then I'm taking that yellow, that 916, this is like my favorite canary yellow, and putting it on top at the very edge of the petal. So we've got an inside of the petal, meet the middle and the outside. How's it looking on your end? Looking good. Good. How fun is this? Looks like a zinnia. Ah. <laughs> is that Miss B? All right. It is. It is. <laughs> Great. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at some watercolor zinnias on the wall of my mother's. I, it's unbelievable the difference, but oh. loose watercolors. Yeah, I know. I'm not, I'm I'm pretty tight. And and again, that's, but, you can interpret. <laughs> no, I'm no, I can't. You can't. You have to do it this way with pencil. Yeah. Stephanie, I'm new to pencils, and I've managed to get myself some Prismas. How much pressure are you pr pressing? Quite hard. Allie, I am, and I am a very what I call heavy-handed, and not every two days. <laughs> Okay. Some of the students I've worked with have a very light touch and it's lovely. I, I, I don't expect you all to like copy me. Um, I really want you to find your own flavor or style or whatever you want to call it. Um, especially in the color rendering. Um, I'm really teach a lot about, you know, proportion and getting things look as they are. And then when it comes to color, it's a free story as far as I'm concerned. You don't, you don't okay. have to. 
Okay, thank you. I'll probably see what you're doing for now because I'm new to color pencils and take it from there. But. Sure, exactly right. And the more you do it, the more you know style you might get or flavor that you like. That's great, thank you. Sure, that's a good question. Well, that yellow really helps the orange. It's the first time I've done that with this orange flower, and I think it really looks nice. So, thanks for the idea, whoever gave some. <laughs> it's that third. It was that third element I needed. Stephanie. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if you can hear me. Um, somebody mentioned to me about if I had a blending pencil. And I don't know that we ever mentioned that. Do, what, do, do you use such a thing or what so is the, that? The blending pencil to me is just adding more wax on the page. Remember that our, the, um, the medium, this medium is bound together with its, with its color with wax. You know, acrylic uses mm -hmm. acrylic. And then you add color to it and you get your, you know, your cadmium red or whatever that is. So for me, it adds another layer of wax, which you don't really want. So I do my blending with another color. So for example, on this, Debbie, my yellow yeah. would have been the blender. Does that make sense? Yes, because I sort of go over my things. It seems at the end with a green or, yes. you know, one color. Yes, to blend everything. So that's okay. exactly right. So we're blending. We're just using color to blend it. Okay. And and that uh, the blender is an, another technique. And I've seen it used very successfully. Um, like I've watched some videos, and yet it doesn't particularly interest me. I I want I just want to play with color. So mm -hmm. we don't need we don't need. I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, are, mm -hmm. you're welcome to try it. Well, I don't know how you can um, make like the colors any better. Just as I'm blending these leaves, you know, like yeah. why you wouldn't use more color. I don't know. <laughs> I can't answer that. Yeah. <laughs> so since we have our yellow out, let's look at the uh, cloudless sulfur. As soon as you get your your zinnia, and I'm going to do a little sharp pencil sharpening. So what we'll want here is our uh, our nine one six, which we which we love and we use it everywhere. And the other yellow that I use, I'm lucky because I had some, but if you have um, an, another yellow, it could be a creamy yellow. Uh, I like to work with, I'm gonna work with a neon yellow. There's also something called a deco yellow. Um, the, the, the base is gonna be the 916. And then see if you've got another, what you've got in your box. Cream. I know there's a cream. Uh, 914 you might have. I just like to have at least two different. Um, it could be a yellow orange. You'll notice that there's some cloudless sulfurs that have, have an orange. We're, we're mostly yellow. It could be a yellow green. So uh, we, we want to be playing a little bit with like two, two yellow-ish colors, two yellows. And the other thing too, uh, grab, a, grab a brown, like a reddish brown, a Tuscan red, or I don't want to put black on here because I just don't think it's, uh, it's too much black. And I think brown, uh, there's a sienna brown that's not too dark. 
that's how I want to work with the body. Okay, so I'm going to I grab the sienna brown, a lighter brown or a reddish brown. If you have a token red, is also fun. Good. Well, if you can. And one of the ways I organize my pencils is I have them organized by color. So I have a little jar with yellows, a little jar with greens, a little jar with blue, so, that's, so that, that helps me. And where I want to start is right on, I'm going to try to leave a white spot for the eye here. I've got my brown, I'm going to leave a little white spot uh, on, on his head. I can leave a little white spot highlight on the body like a little oval in the center of the body and then sometimes there's just a little stripe on this tail just a little little highlighting there so that's what and see that brown is soft or, or, or it's just not black and i'm going to hold on to this pencil because i'll also make the little spots with it So I'm going to take my uh, bright yellow and my, my, my regular yellow, 916. If you have a lighter, like a cream or a, something like that. And well, I'm going to start with the lighter toward the body and then the darker yellow toward the outside. And I don't even mind some overlap there in the middle. It's just giving it a little, it's just not coloring it one color. And that's really important to me. Um, you can be working with your white, yellow, green. You can be, I can add this cream. I can add a little cream on top. This could be a good blender, the cream. Now it's broke. <laughs> And I'm just going to add a little brown to the edge here. It looks like the female has a little bit of a of an edge. Put a little dot in there. Put a little distinction. It has some bangs, but I don't always play around with that on something as delicate as this. You could. To try it. It's a soft, oh, just a little soft pencil. In that brown. So essentially, I've got a little, a lighter yellow in there, like regular, you know, our regular yellow. Here's this sienna brown just on the edge a little bit. I've got a, there's some veins that come from the, the edge, just soft, not real dark, just a suggestion. Nice. All right, now this color is so fun. This is typical to me of a beautiful zinnia that goes from, here's, here's this color. And I kind of did it, well, you can do it. I went, I put my dark in the middle, but this could be lighter, but see this uh, uh, lavender? There's a, there's a pink to lavender. This was a little bit more where I was coming from. See how we've got pink and lavender in here? So this is a lighter pink, lavender, so at the edge, we could do it that way. We could do, there's also some uh, lines in here of color. So what I pulled out color-wise was 
there's a deco pink and then lavender lavender is nine three four and the deco pink is ten fourteen and i also have 928 blush pink and that might be something that you got so there's blush pink got a little deco pink and this lavender So I'm going to start with the red center because I always want to be able to do the otter thing. Here's my lighter red. I'm just adding some of that light red in there. <clears throat> Here's the darker red. Just to give it a little flavor, there's some, just some dots in there of darker. The yellow that I use a lot of, 916. These little Again, I always, anything that's unusual, I want to do that first because once I get zooming around with my other colors. And what I did here was to add the lavender in the back, which helps me with the shadowing. So here's our shadow. And then here comes the pink up front, going to the back. So we're now in a, the red family and the purple family, but we know they're friendly with each other because they're close on the color wheel. Now, Stephanie, are we supposed to have yellow in there somewhere? Up here, up in here. If you've got these little spikes, the little yellow spikes, and if you don't, that's no problem. It's it's this little yellow story around. So here's okay. a red disc. So I, I added some of those points. Uh huh. Okay. I got it. This is pretty fun. Got to get behind the <laughs> Move over there, buddy. So since this is one of our layers, we're going to do that a little bit of a shadow, that darker And this is where also the blending, you know, my pink, the pink's going to be the blender. I don't mind going over some of that lavender with the pink. Stephanie, are you outlining your leaves with that darker lavender or doing the edges darker or just the centers like in? No, I'm doing the outline. The outline also. Okay, I, I can mm -hmm. see so right here. Little here. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to emphasize okay. that. Okay, I, I got it. And we could add the darker, the shadow a little bit from the, the butterfly. So there could be quite a bit of purple that butterfly is a lavender. And this white might be too white on the butterfly. Um, I think the highlight, I might make yellow. Don't try it. The white seems kind of bright. 
Yeah, that looks a little better to me. So I just took that white highlight and made it yellow. I don't, I don't want that to be like something that people are spending a lot of time on looking at. <laughs> like what happened there? So the next one we'll do, if you want to, I'll wait just a little bit, is this pomegranate magenta process red. And I'm going to get started. Our twin is going much too fast. And I'm um, going to work from the dark on the base to the, the lighter. It's not necessarily lighter, but more pinky. So I have more of a red. Uh, red is the dark. Pinky is the lighter. And I can also take a little pink on top of that. I've got my little kitty talking to me. So the dark is just at the bottom of it. Right, right. I'm, I'm making a distinction of, yeah. That's, that's actually the magenta. And then the top oh. is the process red, which has more pink in it. It's a pretty, it's not too much of a distinction. And what I'm gonna do be is I'm gonna put pink on the very top on top. <laughs> so I'm gonna take pink and I'm gonna put it on the top of that edge to give it just a, a little bit of a lighter flavor. So right back, right on the top here, there's a little bit of pink on. I'm always happy to have three different flavors in one. And then I wanna get the center, which is our red, lighter red, same, and then the darker red. just to give it, and then the yellow, if you had a chance to put the little yellow pieces in. Look at this super red here. Look at this almost black red. Nice. Gorgeous. The last bud is, is just a combination of reds, red and red orange. The puppy red is orangey. You can use permanent red. And pull out my scarlet lake. And this is again going to be dark on dark at the base and then medium. There's not a lot of space here, but I am going to pop in this little orangey on the top to give it some brightness. Yeah, this poppy red's great. I'll add my greens and just be playing around here. I know with 
relaxing with this. Get a stem in here, which is kind of typical for me. I work with a highlight on the right. I've got my middle green, spring green, 913. Just the blender here, and I added a dark green on that left side. Oops. So kind of a typical highlighted white in the middle. Push that yellow back. So I like to have a variety of greens in here in the leaves. So I've got the dark, medium, and light. A little bit of yellow in there. Give that vein a flavor. I like to start light, move into the medium. So I've started with the yellow veins. Here comes the green in between. Got a dark outline. And I come back with medium and just push it around a little bit. This would be my blender. So the other thing I'm going to do is, before we go is to think about my rectangular shape. And it's a good time to pause. So I do want to put a foreground on the piece. Look carefully at, at the size, how things work down. I'm going to actually put this down here. So I have four by five now, but I'm actually, I think I want to pop my, I'm gonna pop my uh, zinnia off the top. I don't wanna to touch the butterfly, so I'm gonna leave the butterfly some space. I think I've got this line close enough here. I might narrow this a little bit. And I do have a little block on the bottom. So when you get ready to add your rectangular shape, just take a look, see if there's any adjusting because you know we originally made that shape as a guide. Now, now it's gonna become part of the Stephanie, what are what's the size of that block that you're putting around I there? So what I want you to think about, Debbie, is how does the block fit for you? So I have okay. left what's most important is not the size, is it how it's how it fits here. So I pulled okay. it pretty tight. See how tight I got it? And it's it measures 
three and three quarters, but I don't want yours to be three and three quarters if that isn't a good size for you. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, I guess we start with the block, right? Yeah. Yes. No. We do, but oftentimes for me, I will so oop, I got a little bit of a problem here, so I'm gonna fix that. Um okay. when I do the composition, I'll change the composition from what I originally did. Mm -hmm. So in other words, yeah. I always wait to put the block in after the thing after we're finished. The block is just a starting place for me, Debbie. All right. And then I sometimes don't even put a block in there. Mm -hmm. I don't finish it, you know, I'll erase it and not have one. Or mm -hmm. I'll pop a, uh, this one, I pop something off the top. I want this to be straight across because I'm going to put the letter in there. Mm -hmm. nice. So what I want you to think about is what looks good to you in reference to the spacing. Mm -hmm. You may find that, um, you know, if you haven't done all your, I found yesterday that, so here's yesterday's, which is different than today's. <laughs> yeah. I, this is the final, which the one I did for you has a whole nother block of leaves down here, which I was like, no, 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 we don't need to be doing that. All we need is that. So I have a question. If the leaf is turned, the turn part is lighter or darker? I usually make it darker. Okay. Okay. Yeah. As if the sun's coming from here and it would be in shadow. Mm -hmm. So that was a good question. So I would go ahead and have this. The, the unturned part with the yellow and the medium green, and but the, the turned part, so then I can put this medium green next to it, and that darker, it, it'll show up well. I think it's an easier way for it to show that it's different. That's the main thing you want to tell your audience, that something changed. It's a good question. But it gives me, look how it just gives me a chance to have that be darker. And it really pops. Yeah. So, so there's no question. There's something going on there. <laughs> Good. Stephanie, I've got a question about layering. Yep. I missed that you, that you were using yellow in the, uh, the first leaf that I did. Um, so I used green and I want to lighten it up. Can you put light over dark with colored pencils or? Yes, absolutely. I do it all the time. Yes. So that, so the, um, try that light on top of, of what you've got going. Thank you, thanks. And see if it pushes it, what I call pushing it back. Yeah, thank you. Good. I think that's one of the advantages for me with colored pencils is it's really hard to, to do something that you can't still play around with. And that's different than some of the wet mediums that get, you know, you just you gotta get it right the first time. Mm -hmm. 